Please welcome to the show, Beth Zipper. She's a registered dietitian, as we were saying. Beth, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy, especially because you have such amazing credentials from Cornell, and we have such an important topic today. We're talking about childhood obesity, as we said. Beth, how common is childhood obesity? Well, believe it or not, childhood obesity is quite common in the United States. About one in three children are obese overweight or obese. And there's different classifications for obesity and overweight. Um, and that's based on a BMI. I don't know if you're familiar with the BMI, but it's a body mass index table. And it's calculated by the child's height, age, and weight. And the tables are very easy to access on a website called the cdc.gov. And you would basically plug your children's values in there, their height, their weight, and their age. And according to other children, they come up with a curve, like a graph chart. And usually your pediatrician, though, would tell you if your child is on the chart or above the body mass index. But basically what they're saying is that if your BMI is 85% above normal, that's considered overweight. And if it's above the 95th percentile, then you're considered obese. And one in three children in the United States, states excuse me, is classified as either obese or overweight, according to those standards. That's really scary. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of diseases and problems associated with obesity. Can you discuss some of those? Sure. Childhood obesity, it's, when the children are obese, it's very similar to adult obesity. And they're finding that children that are obese are having very similar disease states and side effects as, as adults do. It's very, very similar. For example, type 2 diabetes is very common with children that are obese or overweight. No, sorry, to interrupt. Is that, that's the, uh, the later onset, not the birth, right? That's well, later onset diabetes. In fact, when I first became a dietitian, going back many, many years, type 2 diabetes used to be called adult onset right. because it was only found in adults. Yes. But now it's actually so common that they've changed it from adult onset and calling it type 2. Type 2 is non-insulin dependent diabetes. Um, that usually means it can be controlled with diet, exercise, and sometimes with oral medication. Type 1 diabetes is actually what they used to call juvenile diabetes, and right, that right. requires insulin for control. Okay, isn't it interesting that they changed the name? So we really have a trend of obesity right, because in children. Right, adult onset wasn't really accurate anymore. It actually was becoming anyone, children were developing it. It's very sad that your children are developing, de developing diseases so young because that's only going to make their lifespans obviously shorter and less healthy. Yeah, so, it's quality of life. It's so it's a really important factor to make sure your children aren't obese or overweight as much as possible, but the type 2 is just one of the many side effects that children can develop from being overweight. What are the other ones? Well, some of them already have hypertension or high blood pressure. Again, that's normally a disease that's associated with adults, not so much with children, but children can develop hypertension. They can develop sleep apnea. Wow. Which is the snoring and the ability to sleep to at end night. Up breathing problems, and they're waking right? up many times during the night and not getting good night's sleep. And that's affecting, of course, their performance in school and after school and athletics. So that's a, a real big problem. Yeah. You know, I also think from a psychological perspective, when your children are overweight, and of course, you know, we as adults try not to judge, but I think children are not as able to not judge. And I think from, a, from an emotional, when you're developing who you are, and when you're developing actually your, your self-worth and, mm -hmm. your, and your position in life when you're young, because kids are not always so nice. We like to think they're, but they're not. You know, uh, it's really difficult for a child's psyche, no? Children that are overweight suffer emotionally as well. That's basically what you're saying. Yes. They... They are picked on at school. They are teased. Um, they have, you know, it's, let's say you're picking teams. Of course, the overweight kids, not the one that's going to be picked for a sport, first for a sports team. Mm -hmm. They're taunted, and they, that leads to very bad self-image problems for the children, and that can affect them in all, you know, all aspects of life. So it's emotionally a problem. And another thing I wanted to pick up on too, um, I did work. Um, a few summers at a weight loss camp for children. And you're seeing more and more overweight children, because I've noticed this from the camp especially, on medication, on medication, on medication for depression. Oh, it's so sad. And it's really sad. And a lot of times you start to wonder, well, are they overweight because they're on the medication for depression? Is that making them eat more? Right, because that can be a side effect of the medication. Right, right. Or are they on the depression medication because they're overweight and depressed about being overweight? Oh, so sad. It's kind of like a chicken and the egg type of thing, mm -hmm. so you don't really know. But 
I can say is that the camp that I worked at had about four full-time nurses just to dispense medications to children. Aww. And I remember years ago as a camper, very few children were on medicine, very rarely taken. And it's just become very, very prominent and you know, in this society it's very or prevalent. prevalent. Yeah. And I'm not saying not to treat children because they do need medication, but it's just alarming to me how many children are on the antidepressant medications. You know, th that's, that brings us to another topic about obesity now. So I don't want to lay blame for anybody because there's no blame to be laid here, but how much of this can we prevent? How much of it is, is a responsibility of a family? How much is it is genetic? How much is it environmental? How much is it medical? Because there are other reasons for this. That's a very good point, Lindsay. I would say most of it would be environmental as opposed to, environmental would be number one, number two would be genetics, and number three would be an actual disease where the child um, can't, is gaining weight, say thyroid, maybe they're on a medication, on steroids or some type of medication that makes them eat more and gain weight. But uh, most of it would be environmental and genetics. For example, a friend of mine, her, her husband, who I know from high school, was always very, very, very big guy in high school. And her son was five years old, and he, she's been having issues with him with his weight. And she, would, she called me up, she goes, I don't know what to do. And then she started to talk to me a little bit about, you know, what she was giving him and, you know, what she was feeding him. And she said, well, I pick him up from school, and he's just so hungry, and I'll give him an apple, but then he wants more. And then, so I, I'll give him, then I might give him some pretzels, and I might give him a cookie. So he would whine and get the food that he wanted. So you have to be strong. It's not easy. You need to be strong and firm. And maybe it requires having them in the car, give them the apple, but take them to a park. Take them out. Just get their mind off eating a little bit. Even giving them, a lot of times I suggest have a drink, have some water. Mm -hmm. You know, have like, like water or flavored water or something. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes you think you're hungry and, and you're thirsty. Massive, yeah. So you have to kind of distract the child a little bit, but be strong. And it's not easy. I mean, we've all been there when our children are whining mm -hmm. and want something from you. It's hard to say no sometimes, but it's in their best interest if you can stay firm. I also think it's really important, tell me your thoughts on this, um, to actually be very cautious with the type of foods you're giving your child when, because if you could give them mm -hmm. something that's more complex rather than pretzels or cookies, then that'll last them, it'll satiate them longer so they won't have this five minutes later they're starving and they haven't used any of it, it's just stored when insulin comes in and stores yeah. it. That's a very good point, Lindsay. The types of food are very important. High fiber, when you're saying um, glycemic, were you saying glycemic index? Or yeah, like a low glycemic index, but also like a high complex carbohydrate, carbohydrate where it takes a while for them to break down the glucose chain so right. that they have like it's spewing out in their system. Therefore, they're satiated longer. They don't have, you know, when you eat that cookie, all of a sudden, if you don't use that, it's being destroyed right, right in your butt, you know? Well, what happens is you get a hyperinsulinemia, so, mm -hmm. or high, you'll get a hyper high blood sugar. The sugar goes into your system and immediately you'll spike your sugar. Mm -hmm. Then the insulin comes in the bloodstream, pulls out the sugar, and then you can sometimes go very low or hypo. Right, so you get exhausted. Or... And then you get hungry again, too. Mm -hmm. and you get shaky, so yeah. then they want to eat again. So if you have foods with high fiber in them, mm -hmm. complex carbohydrates, going back to your basic foods, mm -hmm. fruits, vegetables, um, whole, whole grain breads, even pretzels would even be better, you know, pretzels or lower fat kind of grain as opposed to a high fat food which has more calories and also easier to eat. So I would suggest going with the high complex carbohydrate foods. More your natural foods. But there are, you know, if you're, sometimes you're in the car and maybe you don't have time to pack something. Maybe ha it's okay maybe to have a bar now and then for them, something in the car. But if possible, having some fruits, a little snack, little and little portion size. Let's talk about that, how important that is. Oh yeah, portion size is so important okay. to watch your kid. And again, if you can slow your kid down eating, right, that would also be helpful. And and what what is on their plate? If it's all carbs, they're going to be hungry. And if you have some fat in there, like a nice balance, no? Right. Well, fat's good for satiety. Exactly. Right. Fat and high carbohydrates will keep you more satisfied. So you don't want to just have something pure carbs sometimes right. or a little protein. For example, oh, yes. put, make it all three food groups, protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe some peanut butter on crackers, cheese and crackers. Even like those little boxes of milk, you know, little, yeah. you can get a little box of milk and they can have that with their crackers and peanut butter. 
milk is a really underutilized beverage a lot with children. I'm not saying if you don't like dairy, it could be even soy milk. Right. But you want to get some calcium and some healthy, you know, nutrition into the children. So that would be a good thing to Plus have. Plus it's filling. It's filling. It has protein in it. If you have a juice box, that's going to be more of a simple carbohydrate. Right. Juice, juice is very similar to drinking Coke. Or, yes, or so high sugar, high sugar. So you'd be hungry again. So better to have the glass and have like a little juice box, if, I'm sorry, milk box, carton of, of milk. Much better yeah, than so having the juice or something that's going to be absorbed rapidly, spike the blood sugar, then come down rapidly and cause hunger again. Yeah, so. I have a lot of people telling me that I know have some friends that have some overweight children. They say, Lindsay, they're kids. They have to have this, they have to have that. And I always tell them, I want your thoughts on this. What okay. I always say to them um, is that, you know, if you eat, yucky most of the time and occasionally eat well, which is a lot of the case with these kids, then it does nothing to occasionally eat well. However, because the opposite is true, you can actually live a life like this. If you eat well most of the time, you provide a healthy meal most of the time, mm -hmm. it's okay for them to have cake at a party. It's okay for them to have... Do you agree with that? I agree. I f what you're saying is what I would tell a parent would be always eat from the... Well, the food plate. That's a very big thing now, but always eat the, the food groups that you need Eat those first. Then, if your child is still hungry after having all their fruits and vegetables and protein mm -hmm. and dairy, then if they're hungry, okay, let them have a cookie or something like that. But make sure they've eaten everything that they should from the, the major food groups that they need for proper nutrition. Then they'll have the good background and the good base cover, I'm like the good it. layer of covering there. And then if they have their cookie, okay, fine. But if they actually start eating healthy, they shouldn't be that hungry for all the junky foods. Right. They and should be more satisfied with the proper food. Absolutely. And I think that's, a, that's an excellent point because if they do want dessert, after they've had all of that, especially this like fat mm -hmm. protein is very well balanced, they won't be hungry, but also they won't eat the six cookies they would have had if they right. had it instead. <laughs> they'll have a lot, right, they'll be eating right, less, less they'll have it. a lot less room, so they'll maybe have one cookie, which is fine. I mean, they're kids. moderation mm -hmm. is really the key with nutrition, moderation. You just want to have everything in the right amount. Not too much of anything, not too little of anything. That would keep you healthy. But, yeah, I also love that point. I want to stress that point to you that um, uh, hunger is often masked by, no, thirst is often masked by hunger. Right. And it's really important, and that for our adulthood too, if you feel like you're mm -hmm. hungry and you've already eaten enough and you know you've eaten enough, uh, have a glass of water. Mm -hmm. Because you'd be surprised, right? If Absolutely. you're craving like fruit or you're craving something that's got a lot of high water contact, think first, because if you have a glass of water, sometimes you're so satiated you actually don't mm -hmm. want the food. Absolutely. Yeah. And even if you had a glass of skim milk, instead of eating something that wouldn't be you know, low, lower in calories, that might be a little bit high in calories, even a glass of milk instead of, after the water, instead of maybe something you know, that's not the best choice, yeah. see how you feel. Because it, you know, it would fill you up and give you calcium and really good nutrition. So That's wonderful. D. Okay, so I, I also want to say that for me, I have three kids. And what I found to be really effective, and I don't know if it works the same with, with mm -hmm. this type of issue, is I don't buy it. It is not in my mm -hmm. house. Oh, yes. It, I don't bring it in. They can't, if it's not there, they don't have a car to go anywhere. <laughs> no one's walking out of my house to go to a store. It's not in my house. But when we're out, I let them have some. I think that's a great plan. I think that way it's not part of their everyday food and diet, and they know it's a treat. So when they go out, they can have that. As long, and how, but how are your children when they go, to, let me ask you a question, how are your children when they go to other people's houses that have those kind of foods? Well, you know, <laughs> when we were younger, when, we, when they were younger rather, I could see the, oh my God, you got Oreo cookies, <laughs> you know, or you got this, and Milan would be shoving her face like this, or, you know, but that's dissipated. You know why that's dissipated? My kids are athletes, number one, okay. and when you eat that well that long, you know how yucky you feel when you eat something awful, right. and when you provide your kid with that foundation, like my kids will go out and they're like, I cannot eat that. I feel like awful after I eat that. And they'll literally say that. Since they were young, they've been saying that. They, you know, yeah, it's like they got in the habit yes. and not even realizing it of doing the right thing. Yeah. And the reason why I asked you that question is because I had a friend's son once come over my house and literally tear through my cabinets and cupboards. <laughs> and I was thinking, maybe she doesn't even have like butter in her house. I don't know. So, you, you know, you have to strike a balance. You can't yeah. make it too Spartan if your kids are just going crazy we'll when bake. they're not with you. But, you, you know, it's okay to have some things around. Yeah, well, we bake. If, mm -hmm. if we right. want something oh, good, right. sweet, we'll bake it together because we have gluten-free in my house, right? We'll bake it together. So I know what's in there. I Perfect. know exactly what's in there. I'm okay with them having sweets and, and like junky things once in a while, but I make it. 
that's another point I was going to bring up as far as helping your kids, you know, get to the right weight. Make them part of meal time, of cooking, even shopping. Take them to the supermarket with you. Show them vegetables. Have them pick things out. You would be surprised how much more involved and how much more interested they would be in eating healthy if they were part of planning the meal from the beginning. Yeah, even cooking you, the meal with you, yeah, right? Yeah, cooking. Pick a recipe together. Have them help you. I mean, that would get them so interested as far as you know, what, being part of a healthier meal, and it would be fun for them, too. It's not like forced on them because they've actually decided, you know, I'm going to help mom and I'm going to make pick my foods and the whole family could eat it together. I love so, that. Yeah. Before we, before I say goodbye, which I would love to have you on all day, <laughs> um, are there any other things, quick tips that you can give us to help the, the, the parents of children that are, you know, approaching obesity or that have obese children? Well, I think it's good to f always consult with your pediatrician. Okay. You know, make sure that, that your child is overweight and does need help. Um, definitely not being judgmental, you know, don't mm. pick on every little thing they eat, don't point everything out to them. Be positive as much as possible. You need to be their support system. They may be at school getting teased by other kids. You need to be a up safe and positive and, yeah, and always, a, you know, a supportive of them. So otherwise, they might not, you know, they may not get the same feeling about wanting to take care of themselves. Just always be positive and small changes. Don't like go overnight. Meals Change. together, you said, right? Yeah, family meals are wonderful. And just very small changes. Don't change everything in one day. Cut out a little one thing at a time and just stick with it and go from there, like build, step up and build. Yeah, and you know, they will feel better. They're going to feel better and that's going to motivate them and propel them into wanting to live a healthier life. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much. You're so welcome, <laughs> Oh, Lindsay. my gosh, Beth, you were my such pleasure. a pleasure. My pleasure. Again, Beth thank Zipper, you. registered dietitian from Cornell. Oh, Lucky us. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Hi, welcome to the juicing portion of Happy Healthy Stronger. I'm here to make a Lindsay drink. This is something that I have so often because it has such amazing properties and it does something instantly. I want to tell you why, first of all, I had it. This is pineapple and this is basil leaves. Basil leaves in here have flavonoids. Flavonoids are cellular protection, DNA protection, but also something really, really interesting that you can feel the effects of immediately if you're not feeling good. Um, in the oils of this plant, it has something, uh, well, it has a major antibacterial bacterial effect, but it has something called, um, it's like an aspirin effect, and it's like aspirin and ibuprofen, and it's major, major anti-inflammatory that you can instantly feel if you're not feeling good in this little itty bitty plant, and it's very smelly, <laughs> good smelling, okay, and in the pineapple, the pineapple has major bromelain in it, and bromelain is responsible for really keeping down your inflammation, whether you have a sore throat or inflammation anywhere in your body. The combination of these two together when you're in pain and not feeling good is incredible and I want to go really quickly and tell you what happened to me I was in Costa Rica on my honeymoon and um, we had a glass of wine every night and every time I have a glass of wine when I wake up the next day I feel like crap throughout the day I get a headache and a headache and a headache until it's really bad and I have to take something and I don't like taking anything but this particular time when we were in Costa Rica on our honeymoon we found this little surfing shop when we went surfing that we'd have a basil and pineapple um, smoothie it's basil pineapple and ice in a blender that's it and my husband tried I'm like Ugh, I'm not trying that and I fell in love with it it sounds disgusting it tastes amazing and every day I didn't have a headache and I kept saying my husband you know it's really weird I actually feel good I wonder if it's the air if it's the ocean what it is and then I went and tried it at home it's this and the effects are that strong okay so we're going to combine this and this I'm not going to make it here for you because it would be really really loud it's just basil and pineapple but it has to be fresh pineapple because bromelain is a live enzyme found in here so you want to make sure that you cut it you put pieces of the pineapple in with pieces of the basil this you can buy basil in the store just the leaves that will be in a little container and use it like that or you can buy the or the whole plant this was like two dollars at fresh market you know and keep it growing in your house before i leave you on that i want to make sure you know how to cut a pineapple so it's really easy and not messy so i'm actually going to cut a pineapple for you and you turn it on its side Okay, made it, when you pick a pineapple, make sure that you can pull at least one of these leaves out at the top. If you can pull them all out, forget it. And if you can't pull it, just wait a little bit until you can, okay? So you're gonna cut the top off first. So you're gonna cut it here like this. That's gonna be loud, sorry guys, but, okay. Now, so it looks like that, okay? This guy here, if you plant this in your backyard, 
just cover the dirt up about here. In about a year, you'll have a pineapple. <laughs> so all you have to do is literally shove this part in the earth and it's ready. Didn't know that until I did it myself. Although my pineapple's only good this big, but it still was fun. Okay, now on each side, bring it down like this. Now if I can do this, anybody can do this. We're gonna make like a flower. It really is this easy. I'm gonna go all the way down and then down again here. Just gotta get a good knife and don't cut yourself, of course. <laughs> And I'm using a serrated knife because it's easier. Okay, almost done here. Okay, and one more. Okay, so it's gonna look like this flower guy here. And then you're gonna find in the center is a core. And believe it or not, most of the, the um, bromelain is in the core. There is bromelain and everything else, but if you can get the core in your blender as well, amazing. Okay, so then you, talk, you go around the core because the core is really, really tough. So you go around the core all the way down like this. Okay, and then I do this. I slice it all the way down, and I go here, and then here and then here, and then all of a sudden you've got all these chunks that just fall off. I'm not gonna put them on the table, but see, just like that. And then you just go around, you do the same thing. It takes two seconds to cut the pineapple, and then you've got all of it to use, and you're not wasting any of it. And it kind of looks pretty too. <laughs> anyway, okay, so wrap it up. We got pineapple bromelain, we've got aspirin-like, ibuprofen-like effects in here, two major anti-inflammatories together, amazing for athletes. I have it every day. Amazing for, for any inflammation you have in your body, amazing for headaches, if you drink a little bit, amazing for a hangover, all round phenomenal drink. Try it at home, guys. Bye. Hi, thanks for watching Happy Healthy Stronger on WRPBI TV. Please message me on Facebook if there's something that you want to talk about or something that you want me to find out for you. If I can't figure it out myself, I'll bring a professional right here on the show and we'll get the answers that you need. Also, please follow us on Facebook. You're going to find a lot more information on Facebook, a lot more than you can fit into these shows, and you're going to find a lot of videos on Facebook that will hopefully really help you out. Now, last but not least, if you are doing something that makes you feel ridiculously alive, please message me on Facebook. Come Come on the show, share it with the world, let's make a difference together. Thanks again for watching and have a beautiful day. Have fun and excite your kids about wildlife at the Palm Beach Zoo. Get close to hundreds of animals like endangered tigers, playful otters, even a Florida panther. The Palm Beach Zoo, it's your zoo. I believe that there are still mysteries in the world, and wonders, and surprises. I believe that fun is a renewable resource. That some things you'll never be able to download. I believe that when we celebrate life, in creatures big and small, we discover connections that stay with us forever. Discover a place where worlds connect. See. Shopping, dining, and
entertaining the grand canal shops at the Venetian. I don't think I've ever imagined it when I was younger or thinking ahead of what it would be like to have a family, but um, having two girls, that can be a little tricky financially. That's why we created American Express Serve, a full-service prepaid account that helps you handle your money simply and affordably. You can upload checks, pay bills online for free, and when you need to, you can always check your balance. With direct deposit, you get same-day access to your paycheck. And you can put money aside for when you need it. Plus, it's all backed by the 24-7 service of American Express. All for just $1 a month. We won't think about the money in 10 years, but exactly. we'll remember that, no. that first middle school dance. Get started today and let your serve account help you take control of your money with ease. I think we're doing a pretty good job. This is what membership is. This is what membership does. Get it at serve.com or a CVS pharmacy. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. We do. Go you. Cigna. Tell us how being true to yourself keeps you healthy at Cigna.com slash go you. Come on, guys. Let's go. Why is this taking so long? Come on. He's your grandpa. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that for? Because you're my grandpa. <laughs> Have fun and excite your kids about wildlife at the Palm Beach Zoo. Get close to hundreds of animals like endangered tigers, playful otters, even a Florida panther. The Palm Beach Zoo. It's your zoo. Presenting Riverstone with the best of everything in an ideal Naples location. 11 gorgeous decorated models with a fabulous clubhouse and an incredible resort lifestyle included. You deserve the best. Luxury residences at Riverstone. From the 400s to the 700s. Immokalee East to Logan Boulevard. Visit glhomes.com now. as I can possibly remember to help as many people as I can to be a part of them living the greatest life possible to live a happy healthy stronger life we are all put on this planet for a reason and that's to do something great whether it be to be an amazing full-time mom or to make people laugh a healer even whatever it is that special talent that special greatness it's unique to all of us and when we find it when we act upon it, it makes you feel completely fulfilled, absolutely beautiful in every way, and mostly ridiculously alive. You cannot achieve this sense of happiness unless you're healthy. And you cannot achieve this happiness unless you're stronger. Through a series of videos and weekly shows, I want to inform you, mostly I want to motivate and I want to inspire you, challenge you to live a better life, to be the best you you can possibly be. I want to assist you on your journey to find your greatness. Welcome to Happy, Healthy, Stronger. 